Days of Handheld. Hello and welcome to Heroes of Handheld, the world's probably, basically, uh, probably not, premium podcast dedicated to everything handheld gaming. So that's your PlayStation Vita, your Nintendo 2DS, 3DS, DSi, depending on whether you like those little rubbish cameras they put in Nintendo devices, or your Android phone, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android tablet, anything handheld gaming, we've pretty much got it covered. I am one of your hosts, and once again, I am back. My name is Colin, and I am joined by... Silence. I am the only one here this week. Um, once again, Chris cannot be here this week. Um, regular listeners to the podcast will know that he wasn't here last week either because uh, he has gone to bed now, so he can't fulfill his duties. Now, actually, I like to picture um, the reason Chris isn't here is because he's snorting cocaine off a hooker's anus. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, last night I watched The Wolf of Wall Street, and there is a lot of uh, cocaine sniffing in that film, I'll tell you. Um, Yeah, Chris can't be here this week because, as you probably should know, you should know, hopefully, he is moving. He's moving into his new house, which means at the moment he has no internet. He's moved in, he's got in safely, he's moved all the boxes, he's put his 3DS and Vita on the top shelf in his bedroom, But unfortunately, he has no internet, which means he cannot be here again this week. Hopefully, he will be back next week. But once again, any news on when he's back, we will let you know through our Twitter handle, our Twitter page. That's at Handheld Podcast. That's where um, we upload bits of Vita or 3DS news throughout the week and information on our podcast. So this week, because Chris isn't here again, last week he wasn't here, but I had Shona um, fill in for him for one week and one week only. And this week, I've decided because Chris isn't here, there's not much point me doing a full hour podcast. Firstly, because I can't speak for an hour. Come on, I'm not that smart. And secondly, because there's going to be no bands. I mean, that's what makes our podcast so lovely. We have bands on this podcast. So what I'm going to do, Chris has sent me some links and some news from the world of Nintendo from the past week. So I'm going to read them out. And I'm also going to read a few bits of Vita news. And that'll be it for this week. So it's going to be a short podcast. It's not even going to be its own number. This is going to be episode 54.5. And hopefully next week we'll be back with episode 55. But as I said, it all depends on whether Chris gets internet or not. And if he stops snorting cocaine of hookers' anuses. You've got to stop it, Chris. Please. It's a dirty habit. You're you're in our hearts. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. Um, so before I get into the uh, news and what's been going on in the world of handheld this week, just to let you know, Wolf... Among Us Episode 5, the final episode in the season, is out on Xbox PS3. And I know that's got nothing to do with handheld gaming yet, because the Wolf of Wall Street... Uh, Wolf of Wall Street? What the hell am I on about? The Wolf Among Us? Jeez. The Wolf Among Us is coming to PlayStation Vita very soon. No release date yet, but um, Telltale seems to love the Vita, which is all good, because obviously the um, Walking Dead se- uh, Season 1 and the first few episodes of Season 2 are on the Vita. And we'll be getting Wolf Among Us on there very soon. But Episode 5 is out, and I've played about... Uh, 20 minutes of it so far and already it's 10 times better than episode 4. The opening t- uh, 5-10 minutes is absolutely fantastic. And really, if you're not playing Wolf Among Us, what is wrong with you? It is a fantastic game. If you like Walking Dead from Telltale, you'll love this. It's brilliant. Why are you not playing it? Go and play it now. And before I get into the news, another uh, quick little news e thing. Just uh, talk about what I've been playing on my Vita over the past week. I've got back into Everybody's Golf again, which is uh, Hot Shots Golf for you people in North America. And um, I've got, I'm doing the challenges, and I've got onto the silver ones, and it started getting just ridiculously difficult. It's unbelievable. Like you'll be on top of a mountain. There's like a, a like 50 mile an hour gusts of wind. There's a helicopter. There's three sand traps and like a massive lake, and you've got to try and get it in two shots. It's it's insane. Um, but for some reason, like, like the amount of times I have rage quitted that game is unbelievable, really. It is quite something. Um, but I keep going back to it for some reason. Anyway, so a game I've been playing over the past few days is a little game, you can hear my Vita, love it, um, a game I found on the store this week, and it's called 
uh, I need to try to see if I can pronounce it correctly. Machinarium. Machinarium. It was originally a PC game, but it's made its way over to the Vita, as a lot of indie games do. And if you like Escape Plan or Limbo, I think you'll really like this game. It's a point-and-click adventure game. It's full of puzzles and riddles. Like, um, you've got to try... Basically, you've got to keep progressing through this world, but you have to um, solve some puzzles to, puzzles to do it. And you play as this cute little robot... It's really a lot of fun. The art style is fantastic. So if you haven't checked it out yet, it's called Machine Arium. I got it for £4.79, so I assume that's about ooh, 6 $7 for you Americans. So it's not that bad. It's pretty good. And I definitely recommend um, playing it. And uh, on the third level, I already got stuck. Now, I'm not very patient when it comes to games like that. but uh, And, uh, and uh, in this game, you're allowed one hint but you're, you're allowed one hint and then one major cheat, which basically tells you how to do the level. And I was stuck in it for so long, I eventually got the cheat. But to get this cheat, which tells you how to complete the level, you have to do, do this really cool little mini game. Now, I don't suppose you remember Space Impact, which was on the old Nokia mobiles. Those little games you got on there, these free games. It's a bit like that, where you have to like go through um, this, this 2D maze and you have to shoot spiders and you've got to try and get to the end. And if you get to the end, you get the cheat. It's a really really fantastic game so far i'm not not that far into it at the moment but i definitely recommend it it's called machine uh machine arium right without further ado let us move on to a very brief news section where i will uh, briefly mention a few news stories from the world of sony and also from the world of uh, nintendo and let's kick things off with a vita um, news story shall we so uh anime expo happened a few weeks ago when oh no it was a few days ago actually it was from the 3rd of july to the 6th of july it was held in los angeles in a, a, a los angeles convention center you think they would have thought of a better name than los angeles convention center but so, yes, this anime expo happened. A lot of special guests were there, you know, people from the world of anime. It was all very exciting. But two things I want to mention. One of them is relevant to the Vita and one of them isn't. Um, so I'm guessing all of you out there have heard about the Luigi Death Stare. Basically, in Mario Kart 8, I think it's 8, on the Wii U, if, you hit, if Mario hits someone with one of his little turtle shells... Uh, he will drive past the person he's hit and give him this really evil glare as if he's about to murder them. It's a fantastic meme. If you haven't heard of it, just search Luigi Death Stare. It's really funny. And um, cosplay, cosplay is a big thing at these expos. I mean, when Chris went to the MCM Expo in London, he dressed up as Jacket from Hotline Miami. And you can see pictures of that on our Twitter page. Um, but this cosplay was fantastic. They had three characters from uh, Mario Kart, and uh, one guy is dressed up as Luigi, and he's even made a little cart, and he literally throws this rubber, he throws this, like, um, squashy, um, cuddly toy shell at these people. They all fall down, and he drives past in his tiny little car and just stares at the camera with evil eyes. It's so funny. You need to search it. Search Luigi Death Stare Anime Expo and you will love it. I might even put the video in the article for this podcast on heroesofhandheld.com so look out for that. Anyway, so the reason I have brought this up is because free games were announced for the PlayStation Vita Anime Expo because a lot of cool Japanese games come over to the PlayStation Vita and uh, I, I get in a lot of trouble sometimes when I say I haven't actually played any of them. So free games have been announced. That NIS America have announced free games for PlayStation Vita. They've announced... Um, now, this one's going to be a nightmare to say. It's called... It's like HTO, capital L, hashtag NIQ... Semicolon, the Firefly Diary. So it, it would be pronounced Hitolo hashtag NQ. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be available digitally this fall in both North America and Europe as a PlayStation Vita exclusive. That's cool. Uh, it's an a atmospheric title. You'll use the Vita's touchscreen and rear touchpad to navigate a young girl through dangerous ruins. Two fairies, one operating in light and the other in shadow, must work in tandem to uncover the girl's memories and save her from her from the darkest of fates. And there's a video, which I will put in the article for this podcast as well. So I'll quickly read a uh, synopsis of the game, goes into a bit more detail about the game. In the depths of a labyrinthine ruin, ruin, a young girl named Mion rises from the, from a deep sleep, lost alone and with no memory of how she got here or where her parents are. She is greeted by two fireflies, as we said, one who likes light and one who likes shadow. And by shifting between a world of light and a world of shadows, these two fireflies must work together to recover Mion's memories and lead her out of the ruins. Now, this looks absolutely fantastic. There's some pictures here. 
This looks brilliant. I'll, ooh, I'll definitely be checking this out when it comes here in the autumn or the fall, as our Americans say. So that's called the Firefly Diary. Don't even try and say the first part of that name because it's insane. Right, the second one is called Criminal Girls Invite Only. Now, this one sort of creeps me out. Um, basically, you in this game, Criminal Girls, there's seven delinquents, seven sins, and only one way out. Just hired for a new mysterious job, you soon discover that this isn't your normal prison gig. You've been entrusted with the care of a with the care of a crew of girls whose sins have damned their souls to hell and an eternity of punishment. Their only hope of salvation is for you to recognise their unique histories and to guide them along the path to redemption. Navigate through the four trials of the redemption program and motivate your crew of delinquents to learn the skills to redeem themselves or leave them to their fate. Fate. Uh, it, and there's a note I, I'm just reading on here there's a notice in order to bring this title to as many fans as possible in North America and Europe NIS America has edited certain aspects of this game um, oh I've seen I'm looking at some pictures yep there's a lot of boob a lot of cleavage and a lot of short skirt okay so this is your typical uh, Nintendo this is your typical Japanese game fair then with girls. So that's all great. I probably will be avoiding that. Um, but it seems really strange. And a bit more info here. The game takes uh, the game takes much the game takes the much adored 2010 PlayStation Portable title Criminal Criminal Girls, which was released in Japan only, and revamps it with a host of brand new content exclusively for the Vita. Explore the depths of hell as you lead the female gang of delinquents on their quest to absolve themselves of their sins and be reborn on Earth. So that sounds interesting, but let's have uh, less anime girls showing their breasts, shall we? Shall we? There's a time and a place. And on the Vita, ain't it, I'm afraid. And the last game on this list of games announced at Anime... Was it Anime Expo? Uh, the Awakened Fate Ultimatum. Is there any info on this game? I don't think there is, actually. There's just a lot of pictures of these girls. Oh, no, here, there, here it is. The Awakened Fate Ultimatum. The game will be released exclusively for the, for the PlayStation 3 Entertainment System. Okay, so that's not the Vita, so we'll skip right past that one. So there's only two games coming to the PlayStation Vita, and they are called The Fair of the Firefly Diary and Criminal Girls Invite Only. And there's the Awakened Fate Ultimatum, but that's for ps3 and we don't care about ps3 cool so that's three awesome or two awesome games coming to the vita well one awesome one and one creepy looking one so look out for those why don't you right so let's get on to the nintendo news shall we and um this is some good news fighting and dash mini games from kirby triple uh, deluxe coming to the eShop. nintendo has announced that the kirby fighters and ddd Dumb's Dash mini games from Kirby Triple Deluxe will be released on the eShop. The games now called Furby Fighter Z and DDD's Drum Dash Z uh, will come with several enhancements, including new power ups and stages for fighters. Drum Dash also new stages, but more masks for what? Drum Dash also new stages, but more masks for DDD to wear as well. Okay, that makes no sense, but I assume it's good. Uh, the games are both due out on July the 23rd in Japan. Fighters is 500 yen, which is about $5, and Drum Dash is, um, is, will set you back 750 yen, or about $8. I think this is actually... Oh, this that explains it. This is an, an Australian Nintendo website, so that's Australian dollars. Sorry, Americans. We don't care about your dollars here. So about 750 yen is about $8, so that's cool. Uh, and they're going to make their way to the rest of the world at some point. So that's cool. If you like your Kirby games, you should be excited about that because uh, the Kirby mini games are coming. I always thought Kirby was a Pokemon. I mean, I look at him. He's just a big... He looks like Jigglypuff, doesn't he? Surely he does. Come on. You must admit he does look a little bit like Jigglypuff. Well, I think he does anyway. Right, so back on to the news um, to do with Vita. And it seems like every week now I'm mentioning something to do with minecraft i'm getting more excited because recently i've started playing the game properly with my friend um we've actually built a world on the ps3 version and i'd never really got into minecraft before but i'm really seeing why people get so addicted to it it's a lot of fun we've made like this awesome tower in the, in the middle of the, you know at the side of this massive mountain so it's like a hotel complex in a mountain it's so cool um just those darn creepers and zombies are a bit annoying but apart from that that's really fun and 4j 
Studios, who are developing Minecraft, Xbox One, PS4, and PS Vita, tweeted, when did they tweet this? 8th of July, so that was yesterday. And they said, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, hashtag Minecraft Xbox One, hashtag Minecraft PS4, and also hashtag Minecraft PS Vita. Exciting times, which means, obviously, the schedule for when it's going to be released is on track at the moment, so we can probably expect them in August. I think I saw somewhere that it's exactly a month, and someone tweeted, or it was rumoured that it's now officially a month until the Vita version is released. So we could be expecting it early August, which will be a lot of fun, and I'm definitely seriously considering picking it up brand new first day. No, no jokes, I really want it, because it's a full... Uh, Minecraft experience. It's not your rubbish uh, Minecraft uh, pocket edition. It's the full Minecraft experience on a handheld device. It's going to be fantastic. I can not wait and uh it just i'm just so excited i can see i'm on this tweet their background 4j studios background on their twitter page is the minecraft world and it's making me even more excited so that's cool so look out for minecraft coming to vita very soon indeed right so on to some more um nintendo news 100 million trades have been reached on Pokemon X and Y, and also fancy pattern Vivillion, Villain, Vivillion, now available for Pokemon X and Y. I remember Chris telling me about this a few weeks ago, about this super rare Pokemon that had either just been released or was super hard to find. I don't really listen to Chris, to be honest, so it could have been either. Uh, back in May, the Pokemon company announced that they would distribute a new fancy pattern, Vivillion. Yeah, this is what Chris told me about. Uh, once 100 million Pokemon had been traded between users via the global trading station. Oh, okay. This milestone was recently reached and the distrib distribution has gone live as of this morning. The fancy pattern, Vivillion, comes with a special move called Hold Hands. How's that a move? Holding hands? That's the worst pokemon move ever um so this is cool a new rare pokemon is available for you to get your mitts on so if you're into pokemon which i am not i haven't played it in months and i'm seriously considering trading it in to get a better vita game just saying uh but if you like your pokemon x and y then you should be excited about that so i've got one or two more news stories but one of them i mentioned in this week's indiecast which you can find on itunes stitcher and at heroesofhandheld.com indiecast is where i talk about everything indie games for about 20 minutes or so so if you like indie games check that out but but the first one. Now, this is going to make people sad. Now, you may remember back in 2011, it was announced that Bioshock would be coming to the PlayStation Vita. Uh, now, three years on, that hasn't happened. It's all gone a bit quiet. But we finally found out some details about what went wrong. The creator of Bioshock, Ken Levine, has put out some tweets about it. And it's not good news, I'm afraid. His first tweet was, On the Vita version of Bioshock, 2K and Sony couldn't put a deal together when I last checked. They seemed way more optimistic about this back in 2011. Um, I don't know why they couldn't put a deal together. It's probably because 2K were like, Give us money to make it. And Sony were like, No, you give us money. And uh, probably never happened. Probably similar to why we haven't got a Netflix app on the PlayStation Vita in the UK yet. Um, and he also said, I wish I could do it. You know, Ken Levine said he wish he could make the game himself, but lawyers and all that. But he still says he loves his Vita. So it's good to know that he's a Vita player as well. And he says that the sort of game that he was thinking that Bioshock and Vita would be was a kind of Final Fantasy Tactics style game set in pre-Full Rapture. So it wouldn't be your typical Bioshock game. Now, I've tried, I played Bioshock 1 about a year ago to give it a try, and I really didn't see what the fuss was about. I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics, I wasn't really familiar with that sort of Final Fantasy game. I did some research, and it's pretty much a... Um, well, according to your good friend Wikipedia, Diff is in several key areas from other titles in the Final Fantasy series. Instead of generic battle screens with the players, characters on one side and the enemies on the other, encounters take place on three-dimensional isometric fields. Characters move on a battlefield composed of square tiles. Movements and, movement and action ranges are determined by the character's statistics and job classes. Battles are turn-based. Uh, a unit may act when its uh, charge time reaches 100. So I can't really imagine Bioshock being like that. Um, as I said, I've never played Final Fantasy Tactics. So maybe it's a good thing we're not going to get it. Because that doesn't sound very uh, good. Not to me anyway. That sounds a bit weird for a Bioshock game. 
He said that that tactics um, gameplay would be something that would work well on the Vita and not be a compromise in any way. Also, as some know, I'm a turn-based whore. So that's Ken Levine's words, not mine. Creepy. So, um, yeah, we're most likely not going to get Bioshock because Sony and 2K are a bunch of kids and can't, um, and can't be friends. So that's unfortunate, but... I wouldn't really want a Bioshock game like that anyway, so maybe it's for the best. Right, let's move on to some more Nintendo news. Uh, Nintendo's 3DS gets its first streaming game this September, so this is exciting. As you know, PS Now is uh, edging ever nearer for all you PlayStation owners in America. I think the beta's out now. I'm not sure if it's out officially yet. Maybe it is, I'm not sure. We're not getting it for a long time, though, here in Europe. Um, but this article reads, we've, been, we've seen quite a bit of game streaming on PlayStation branded products, but it looks like Sony will gain some possible unexpected competition, in Japan at least. When Nintendo 3DS owners in the region play Dragon Quest X Online come, come its September 4th launch, they won't be popping a cartridge into the system. Oh no! Like the massively multiplayer online games mobile version, they could have just said MMO, uh, DQXO on Nintendo's handheld will use streaming tech along the lines of PlayStation now or on live instead of playing from a local cart or internal storage um, you won't be able to play in 3d as a result and you'll constantly need a wi-fi connect connection to access the game considering that's an mno but that because that well considering it's an MMO, mmo that should be expected anyway MMO. however if you'd rather lay down your cash for a physical bit of dq gear instead well there's always this metal slime <laughs> smartphone metal slime smartphone what's that let's have a look at this Oh, there's a smartphone. Dragon Quest Metal Slime Smartphone revealed by Dot Como. Looks more metal than slim or slime. Wow. So they've made a they've made a phone in um to celebrate Dragon Quest. Mm, okay, weird people. Anyway, so the gist of it is Nintendo are actually looking to the future, which is surprising because they only discovered that the internet existed like last week. So that's very exciting. So Sony might be getting some competition with PS now. So that's all very good. The more competition, the better. I've got one last bit of Pokemon news for you. Pokemon that trading card game arrives on Virtual Console this week. Um, so the Game Boy Classic Pokemon trading card game is arriving on the 3DS Virtual Console this week in Europe, priced at £4.99. Um, so I think, is this the game that kicked it all off with Pokemon? Because I believe Pokemon started off as a, get a video game, and then it turned into a card trading game, and then it turned into a physical card trading game, then it turned into a TV show, and now it's like a worldwide phenomenon. So that's cool. If you like your Pokemon and you have Virtual Console, why not pick that up for 4 99 It's not a bad price, even though it's quite old. So I've got one last news story about the Vita, and I mentioned this on IndieCast. Um, Yoshida backtracked on the comments he made at E3 about less first-party games being made for the PlayStation Vita. He pretty much said that, um, now, the question that he was asked was, going forward, will the number of the first party uh, games be smaller? And I said, this is his word, this is Yoshida's words, and I said, yes, number of projects will be smaller. I never said we won't make any games on PlayStation Vita. So he's saying that the amount of first party games will be lower, but there still are first party games being made. And he lists some um, examples like Freedom Wars in Japan, which is selling like hotcakes over there. So that's exciting. Uh, Mur Murasuki Baby, uh, Orishika, Helldivers, uh, and Counter Spy are games he lists. So maybe we're not all doomed. Maybe uh, we still have hope. Uh, maybe we will get a... Uh, well, I'm still crossing my fingers for Vita Pets 2. Please let there be a Vita Pets 2. I'll cry if there isn't. Anyway, that's about all I've got time for this week. I've gone on a bit longer than I wanted to. Um, hopefully next week will be business as usual and Chris will be back. But as I said, we will let you know via our Twitter page, Handheld Podcast. You can find our website, heroesofhandheld.com. You can find us on iTunes and Stitcher. Just search Heroes of Handheld. Uh, what else can you do? You can email us, heroesofhandheld at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, so, and if you want, if you want to add me on, uh, PlayStation Network, it's enter Cole, E-N-T-E-R-C-O-L-E. -E. Thank you for listening, everybody. Until next week, continue playing Wolf Among Us. Seriously, do it, it's amazing. I'll see you next week, bye-bye. The podcast you've just listened to is from the Heroes of Handheld Network. 
you can. Why are you talking in that weird voice? Because I'm trying to tell our listening friends about how they can find us online. But we just did that. Yes, but this way it stays fresh and in the mind. <clears throat> anyway. You can find us at... No, Colin, we've literally just said that. All you're going to say is that we're available on iTunes and Stitcher and a contact for feedback at heroesofhandheld.com or heroesofhandheld at gmail.com and don't forget about relentlessly plugging all our extra content. Twitter at Handheld Podcast, videos on YouTube and, of course, articles and more at heroesofhandheld.com. Great. Can I go to bed now? <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> i got this. And remember, if you play handheld, you're a hero. What does that even mean? If you play handheld, you're a hero. What does that even mean?